Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode of Employees Only presented to you by Mulcahy's. Today's guest is none other than Ricky Roach, Sunday Funday pioneer, Long Island legend. Got a ton of great stories for you. Hear about how he discovered his talent for multi-gender duets. Find out about the time he performed at a dog bar mitzvah. Uh, yeah, a dog bar mitzvah. It's, uh, it's a great interview and we hope you enjoy it. I'm in heaven, I'm in heaven, I'm in heaven, when you smile, when you smile, when you smile, when you smile. Woo! As you can hear, we are live with the great Ricky Roach. I'm, I'm just excited listening to you. I want to go out and go drinking at the bars. He's, he's bringing me right back to the old days. How you doing, Ricky? I'm good. Hello, Ruby. Hey, Tim. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for joining us on Employees Only, presented by Mulcahy's. We're very lucky today to have Ricky Roach. Um, I don't want to, I'm going to blow your head up, Rick. You're the best solo acoustic <laughs> act in the world's ever seen, I think. Oh, thanks. What would you say about that? Very you kind agree? of you. I have no comment to that. that that's uh, okay. amazing to hear, but uh, not for me to say. Very humble, very humble. We'll hop right into a funny question. I feel like a lot of people get to notice you and know you from the multi-gender girl, the guy singing. Oh, uh, the, the duets. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what at first set you apart from everyone else. Like, you want to get into how that started? Uh, sure. Uh, I was playing a bar in uh, Amityville, and there was a bartender, Brenna, I believe her name was. She wanted to sing Landslide by Stevie Nicks. So she mm -hmm. had me learn it on guitar. And then she did it one week, and the following week she was no longer working there. Uh -oh. So I figured, let me give it a shot. I used to play around, and we used to say that live Stevie Nicks sounded like a little shaky, mm -hmm. almost like a goat. No <laughs> yeah. offense. So I did it. I was three sheets in, third set. I did it, thought the place would crack up, and everybody said, oh, my God, you sounded just like her. Wow. <laughs> and that was the first one you did? That, then you started that was, doing that That was one? the first one, yeah. What's another one? What's what's one of your biggest uh, ones? The Kid Rock? I do that? Kid Rock picture, Kid Rock and Sheryl Crow. And there's a story about that. Me and Ruby work in okay, obviously. There was a bartender here. Ricky was playing. I think you were open for Shalei Law. And the girl came to me. She's like, where's the girl that plays with him? Does she like... Oh, no, wait. Hold on. Hang on. Sorry. The girl was like, uh, where's the girl that plays with him? Does she hide in the basement or is she backstage <laughs> or something? So it's legit. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. They get all they get a few funny reactions. Yeah. So I guess I first met Ricky when he was doing stuff for my brother here at Mulcahy's, but I think you're the most famous for basically the creation of Sunday Fun Day down in Long Beach. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that that's wild. Sunday fun days are a blast. When did that start? I I think I was down there in 2004, 2005. Before I moved down to Jetty, where I am now, I was at Minnesota's down the block. And uh, and they were the one, that one? became uh, a thing. That, that's wild out there. Yeah. And you, would you say it grew over the years, or was it hot from oh, the start? Oh, for sure. Yeah, when I started, they would tell me that football was their busy season. Mm -hmm. And then as it started, I came in. I was doing every other Sunday for like a month or two. And then it just started building up. Do you know where uh, they found you? Like where uh, where the guys in Minnesota tracked you down from? I was actually hired to play a bridal shower in their side room. And I was really mellow background music. And the last song I decided to kick it up and I did Leather and Lace. Mm -hmm. by and by John the time Jett? I finished, that's Stevie Nicks and Don Henley. Oh. By the time I finished, both double doors on the side of me were wide open. All the employees standing there. The manager Benny came over and said, "Call me. We want you on Sundays." That's awesome. The was it is history? The rest <laughs> is history for sure. <laughs> and that was what 2000. That's a long run you had there then. Yeah, Crazy. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It's wild. And was it the same owners then, as in Jetty, or different guys? Uh, two of the owners in Minnesota's moved down to Jetty. Mm -hmm. One of them got out of the business. I think he opened up a few pizza places and. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And check out Ricky Roach every Sunday now on his Facebook. It's just Ricky Roach on Facebook. Yeah, Ricky Roach, Facebook Live, he, 6 p.m. Sundays. Virtual Sunday fun day. And That's it. It's cool. We see people, families, and friends, like, putting you on, drinking at their house, trying to yeah. make it feel normal. That's it. I know. I have a shot or two just to uh, keep the vibe going. For sure. So let's take <laughs> it all the way back, Ricky. Where uh, did you grow up on Long Island? 
I did. I grew up in Massapequa, East Massapequa. Went to Amityville schools. Nice. Um, how did you, what was uh, your, your early influences into music? What kind of got you to pick up a guitar? Uh, my mom and dad always had music playing. My mom would drive around and sing in the car. My dad played Led Zeppelin too over and over. <laughs> I've heard Moby Dick more times than anyone could want to hear that song. <laughs> did they play? But, uh, did they teach you? You learned on your own. No, they didn't. But they found me a guitar teacher when I was seven. Wow. I really, I saw the monkeys on TV and that was it. That's what I wanted to do. And they had to look around. It wasn't like today, you know, toddlers and tiaras. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't find a teacher that would give lessons to a seven-year-old. Wow. Yeah, you can't yeah. just Google it nowadays or back then. Yeah. I had a guy pull up. Uh, he, he said, I'll come. But if he doesn't practice and he's not learning, I'm not going to keep coming and take your money. Wow. He'd pull up in front of the house in a red VW bug and come in and sit with me for a while. And if I wanted to learn a song, he would pull out sheet music and take out pen and paper and copy it onto a page for me. That's, That's awesome. awesome. And how long, yeah. did the, how long did you have lessons for? Were you, were you a I, natural right away? I think maybe maybe two or three years. And then, I, and then I started learning on my own once I got the basics down. Do you remember his name? Uh, Tony Tanico was oh, his name. Shout out. Yeah. Shout out Tony. From Massapequa as well. Massapequa Stronghold. That's nice. it. That's cool, your parents, that they supported you and got you a teacher right away. They really did. They really did, yeah. That's awesome. And then you took that over into uh, into school. What were kind of some early bands, or how did you kind of um, make that step? I met a few guys when I was in the fifth grade. One of my best friends in fifth grade, Danny, grew up with a few guys who, were, who had just gotten instruments for Christmas mm -hmm. and wanted to put a band together, and he knew I played and sang. I sang at a few school plays. I was... Peter Pan in the fourth grade. Oh, no um, way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I met with them, and the idea was, we're going to play all Beatles and Aerosmith. I don't know where Aerosmith. <laughs> and we met up and hit it off and played. Wow. Nice. Is that, like, did you guys ever, is that the same group of guys you created a full band with? Yes, yes, yeah. We, we Later we became Ricky and the Roaches. Early on we did uh, original material after a little while as Evolution. Evolution. Then we became Ricky and the Roaches. Nice. As oh. you have seen at the reunion show yeah. at Malls. I've seen Ricky and the Roaches. I love it. A great name, too. <laughs> Evolution, how many, like, like uh, about how many songs did you guys do, originals? Because, like, obviously, as you know, most people just do covers and tributes. So it's interesting that you had originals. Yeah, we had about 10 or 12 songs. We were on Fingers Metal Shop. Nice. We were on BAB. He brought us in. He interviewed us. He played us, played our songs. It was uh, we were we were trying to do it, but it was rough back then. You really needed a break to get heard. Yeah. Did you open up for some guys around here? Uh, yeah, we did a few big shows. We opened up for the Good Rats and Zebra Twisted Sister. We did a show with nice. We did a big show with Cinderella at a place called Sundance in Bayshore. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, Zebra played there a bunch of times, I think. Oh, yeah. And just talking to names, Ricky, is Ricky Roach a stage name in any way? Is that what's on your it, license? It, it is not. <laughs> it is not. It is not. It's an awesome That's name. it, Ricky Roach. I'm a junior. My dad was Richard. <laughs> so I was always called Ricky to be uh Oh, yeah, that's a good to be on stage, you know? Yeah. Ricky it and sounds Roach like a, like, yeah, yeah, it sounds like a stage up. name. That's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The nerve of me, I once asked Jim Small if that was really his name because the, the guy's six and a half feet tall. I'm like, are you trying to be ironic? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, as uh, some of you may know, Ricky is part of the infamous paper bag created by Mike Guido, who does the paper bag concert here every year. You and if you don't know where it is, Ricky, would you mind um, describing to anyone who might not be familiar with paper bag? Who, sure. Who it is things? about 70 musicians that are mostly on stage at the same time. There's a drum, there's four drummers, there's two drum sets, percussion, there's a harmonica section. It's gigantic. It's the biggest sound you'll ever hear. And um, how, how did you meet Guido? Uh, we used to play in the same bars back in the day. My first year was 84, I believe. And it was just a thing for all the local bands to get together and jam. It was Jim Small, there was Chaser, there was the Mud Men, mm -hmm. and all these musicians. He picked a Tuesday when we're all, everybody's off, yeah. and they get up on stage, pick a bunch of songs, and blast through it for six hours. Yeah, and that's been going on, like, I think over 40 years at this point. And it's one hell of an event, and I think I always said Guido should sell it to MTV or something because yeah, last Tuesday in June, I believe, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it lasts for what, like twelve hours? It's till four a.m. on the dot, right? <laughs> yeah, them's the rules. Starts at ten p.m., <laughs> goes to four a.m. There's girls on stilts. It's crazy. It's it's one oh, hell yeah. of a. It's thing. a spectacle for sure. 
And isn't that there's rules? Because I believe there's like the same amount of people in it, and you know, there's only one way to leave. <laughs> I've heard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, people come and go. Once you're yeah. in it, you have a good. I I've come in and out of it. Isn't I've that? I've been I've done about <laughs> 20 years since '84, on and off. Wow. But uh, yeah, you have to go see it. If you're a musician, you have to go see it one year, and then Guido invites you in, and then once you're in, <laughs> forget okay. it. Once you're in, you're never out. Um, That's it. So we're fast forwarding again back to the paper bag and Guido. You guys did some online virtual videos that really got a lot of traction during this quarantine. You want to talk about that a little bit? Oh, sure. That's the We Are the World uh, quarantine mix 2020. That was uh, spearheaded by uh, Adam and Kristen Seeley, who contacted everyone and sent an audio tape of the of the music, and everyone just recorded on their computer or their iPhone. I got a call. I got an email one day, and she's like. If you're not busy today, we're trying to send it to editing tomorrow. Can you sing the Willie Nelson part and a few of the choruses? I was curious and how that worked, Ricky. For anyone who hasn't seen it, you can uh, see it on our Instagram, at Mulcahy's Pub, as, as well as other places online, but it's on our IGTV as a place. I did wonder, did you all do the whole song and then they kind of spliced it together? Like, it, no, it they sent little idea. snippets okay. of the choruses because okay. the chor it does the chorus once and then it modulates to a, right. to a higher key later. So they sent that, and then they asked people to do certain lead vocal parts. I was very flattered when they asked me to do the Willie Nelson part. Yeah, so everybody sent little snippets. I think there was a, an app that he used, mm -hmm. and they got it, and the editing was amazing. Yeah, it sure. really was. It I think it's up to about a million and a half views. I know. I saw it wow. hit a million views. It was That's insane. That's a ton of yeah, people. Yeah, and the production, I couldn't believe it once I saw it. I did it on my, on my iPhone in my hallway and figured... Oh, yeah. It was good to see everyone, too, all the musicians that we haven't seen, obviously, in weeks and months. Just, oh, yeah, guys, uh, you time. know, uh, Tommy Bowes from uh, Steely Dan Band and Tower of Power, yeah. Mike Del Judas and Mike the guys Santino. in 45 RPM. Again, if you're from Long Island and you haven't seen it yet, we are the world, Long Island. Quarantine, quarantine Mix 2020. Yeah, it was yeah. brilliant. So as the um, solo, like, when did you realize that your solo acoustic like, gigs or career, like, that you were really onto something because like you really get the places going better than any other person I've ever seen. A few, uh, I think one or two uh, holiday weekends in the summertime when I was in Long Beach, about four or 500 people packed in and I'm doing uh, maybe Piano Man or Take Me Home Country Roads and the place is singing and bouncing and just the energy is just, Yeah. I, I don't think I felt that except maybe in the paper bag mm -hmm. moments. When I play with a band, that energy and the vibe, it was like electric. I couldn't believe it. It really is. And you have that foot pedal thing. I think that, that bass. Yeah, really yeah, just... yeah. My little porch board that I added a few years in. Yeah, I stomp on that thing and it sounds like a bass drum. How yeah. did that come I... about, Ricky, adding that into the set? Someone mentioned that they saw someone using something with their foot. And then I, I saw in one of the acoustic guitar magazines they were selling it. So I figured I'll give it a try. I'm, I'm one person of anything I can add, mm -hmm. you know. And you're also at uh, Fire Island. Um, sandbar over there, Fire Island? Yeah, Sandbar and Ocean Beach. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Missing those guys. I know. It's or they did a big renovation, too, on the offseason this year. I am excited to see it. How did uh, when did, how long have you been playing there? Uh, I'd say maybe seven or eight years. Oh. I do almost about every other Saturday afternoon. And it's wow, that's, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, that place is a trip. Yeah, I, I know. I've met so many people on Long Island who've Never been over to Fire Island. I'm like, it's like a different little world, you know? No cars, you know? Everybody's there to I love have it, fun. Yeah. It reminds me of like a pirate town or something. Like everything's like <laughs> tight. And it's great. Have you got like a favorite setup, Ricky? Like if you had to choose kind of a venue either on Long Island, do you like playing outside? Do you like being kind of like on a stage, like kind of in amongst uh, it, like you are with some of your Long Beach gigs? Uh, yeah, idea? I have a few. I, I When I did the gig opening up with the new renovation of Mulcahy's, that was amazing. Yeah, that, that was awesome. New sound system and the stage. Um, summer, and like in the fall and spring, I'll play the vineyard and everybody's at picnic tables with their dog drinking wine. And that's great too. Every, every place has a different thing to offer, you know? Long Beach, I get there, they want to drink with me and have fun. Yeah, <laughs> They're yeah. right down to it. Would Fire you? Island, People are off for the week. They're staying there. Yeah, you know, it's all it's all good. A lot. I'm very blessed. I have a lot of great venues that I do. Yeah, I and so. we know you're uh, you missed the Long Island. Have you ever played off the island, like the city, or further afield? Yeah, I I used to do I think a Wednesday night 
over in a place called Mad River in the okay. city. Mm -hmm. That was a while ago. One of the waitresses there went on to be an actress on The Big Bang Theory. Not really? really? Yeah. The one who plays uh, the little short blonde with the squeaky voice. Her name in real life is Melissa. Oh, and wow. she's a stand-up comedian. I met her. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, what? That's Melissa. <laughs> yeah. Is there a big difference, yeah. would you say, with uh, like the city crowds of Long Island for you? Um, City crowd, it's just... I liked it. I had fun with it. It's just getting in and out. Yeah. You know, parking can be crazy, cool. you know, and, and just, it's you know, expensive and all to that. travel. Yeah. It's so funny. You know, you could you could probably play all over the country, Florida. There's a million bars, but, I mean, you keep just busy enough here in Long Island. I feel like you have a gig almost every night of the week, or at least you could. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think I narrow it down three weeks, three nights a week, maybe four sometimes. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah. still live in Massapequa now, Ricky? Uh, I'm in Seaford. I moved a few towns away. My mom's still in the house we grew up in. So. Oh, you're like right over here in Seaford. We should. <laughs> there you go. You're now. you're one mile away. From when me. we're allowed to be around each other, we'll get you in here, maybe. Oh my gosh, I know. I know. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, so you do a lot of weddings. You do a ton of private events. For anyone who doesn't know, Ricky Roach did my nephew's christening. <laughs> and I don't think that there's a Murray family party that you're not involved in. Like it would feel like something's missing. Yeah, you know I, mean? I know. I think I have one in the books coming up. If we if we can do it, I want to say John yeah. mes messaged me about July or August. Does that sound right? I think all well, his birthday. At his birthday? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that must oh, be great! It. I didn't even know about that. Might so be I'm a excited. surprise party. So let's uh, <laughs> let's move to the next question. Yeah, I hope it's not my birthday. <laughs> that was in April. Uh, have you got any um any kind of private function uh stories that stand out ricky is just kind of obviously you do so many any kind of uh, weddings or events that really uh really stand out yeah once i was doing a cocktail hour at battery park in the city and there was a gay pride parade that came along i was outside on the porch and all of a sudden we heard all this racket and screaming everybody at the wedding was like and they all came around they were dressed like butterflies all this glitter with all these drums <laughs> so they came over and I started to play Cecilia by Simon and Garfunkel, mm -hmm. and they all drummed and <laughs> banged their percussion with it. It was very wild. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. We heard a rumor that you did one hell of a bar mitzvah once. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, my dog bar mitzvah for Lucky, a dog in Huntington. <laughs> the owner hired me. It was one of the biggest blowouts. 300 people, 100 dogs in costume, two rabbis. <laughs> How how did he approach you? Like, <laughs> he saw me at the vineyard and he asked me if I do private events and would I do that? I was like, why would I not play a dog bar mitzvah? How do I? How do you say no to that? I, I'm not really versed in the Jewish culture, but like, did you have to bust the dog or anything? Or the the rabbi did. They there was a 20 minute ritual, a ceremony in the middle of it. It was crazy. So it, it was catered. It was I played Who Let the Dogs Out for about 15 minutes <laughs> into Hava Nagila. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I wish I was there. You should have told me. I would have been your roadie <laughs> so, for free that So day. memorable. Mm. I think it was about 9 a.m. on a Saturday. Wow. 300 people, 200 dogs. <laughs> so, in yeah, a big cul-de-sac yeah. in Huntington. If you are planning a dog bar mitzvah, Ricky's your go. guy. He's That's your that. guy. <laughs> Birthday parties are cool, but dog bar mitzvahs is a yeah, specialty. It's definitely on my resume. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, like you bring the energy almost better than any acoustic guy like everyone knows acoustic guys no offense like a lot of them are playing margaritaville and it's like this you could almost pick the same 15 20 songs like when did you realize to start doing like rap songs multi-gender songs like like is that something you've always done like change it up play new songs or is it um no i want to say when i first started doing it somebody sent me a country version of gin and juice mm -hmm. and i listened to it and i was like okay I was like, but look, why don't I try to do the original? That's what people know. And I did it and it went over well. So I was like, mm. okay, this adds something a, a little bit different to it. Then I started doing Shaggy. I'll do a little, uh, be a little biggie here and there. You mm. know, it just mixes it up. You know, I think it does too. Like when you're out, it kind of like tricks your ear. You're like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> like, cause you're not, you're not ready for Post Malone or Shaggy or insane right, to be right. on acoustic. It's, yeah, it's Sean really, Paul, I do a few Sean Paul songs. It's really something. Um, and Ricky, we know, again, your variety is is unmatched for sure. Um, if anyone doesn't know, a year or two ago now, Post Malone himself actually tweeted uh, Ricky's performance of Rockstar. 
yep, gave him the cosign. That was awesome. We were really Amazing. proud to see it. Um, are there any genres that you that you would shy away from, or is kind of anything anything within limits? Uh, yeah, I'll listen to pretty much anything, yeah. you know, uh, I mean, everything's got chords and nobody's, nobody's, uh, reinventing chords. I mean, everything's, you know, a lot of things, one person, there's too much going on. Yeah. It's sometimes hard to narrow it down to a solo performance, but what would you I'll say, are your, um, what would you say are your say top three requests that you get now at this stage with, you know, I'd say a lot of your audiences are coming to see you and of at least, you know, I'm sure it's half and half at a lot of places. Like, do you have any requests that come up again and again? Uh, I, I mean, Long Island, I get a lot of Billy Joel always. <laughs> I think once a, once a gig, um, what do I do? A uh, gin and juice is a big one. I get requested, uh, Beatles. Yeah. And are they your favorite today? Have what's you, that? My favorite? Um, favorites today? I do enjoy like chicken fried. I, I like I play that a lot, but I enjoy it. That's a little tricky on the guitar. Yeah, that's, that's a good live song it. for sure. Yeah, yeah, and that's good because it's a newer song. But you know, some of the older crowd have heard it. Yeah, right. You know, what I like about you too, Ricky. Like a song will be hot. It'll just come out and like, like say it comes out on like Monday. It's busy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Like you'll know it and you'll play it by Sunday, and like. <laughs> Oh, thanks. It's, it's really good. A lot of the newer material, it, it doesn't have the shelf life. You know, yeah. I can play a Beatles song forever. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. of these songs, they come and go over a summer. At the end of the summer, you know. Yeah, no one cares. Anymore. Yeah. Once, Old Town Road. Old Town Road oh, yeah. is like, okay, we, we got <laughs> yeah, it. Exactly. One song Ricky did, which I love, it was in quarantine, but uh, when Tiger King came out, <laughs> and and then old yeah. Joe Exotic song said YouTube. I was like, oh, I can't wait for Ricky. Ricky is going to kill this. And I think you did a couple uh, Joe Exotic specials on your Facebook. Yeah, I worked up a little medley. It's kind yeah. of a shame the bars are closed because I was like, oh, the Joe Exotic songs. They're going to be I hot. Know. Everybody would have been it. singing Mark along Haley's and laughing. Oh, wants to, to claim that show, that yeah. comeback show. I'll play <laughs> Joe Exotic anything he wants if they want him out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> opening set by Ricky. We'll set for Ricky's renditions as well. Let's yeah. just put that on the table. Yeah. <laughs> but then we did, well, then we found he didn't sing. Exactly. I know, yeah. <laughs> Could have all... been you all along, Rick. Nothing is sacred. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what advice would you give to any up-and-coming artists? Or it could be about writing songs or acoustic guys going out in bars. Like, you've been around a while. You're a legend. What would you say? <laughs> um, I would say... Uh, uh, really do your work, practice and get your singing and guitar down because there's going to be a hundred distractions. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of things to throw you off. If you, if you're, if you're just focused on that, this one's running up to you, this is happening. You know, someone wants to hear this. If you got your stuff down, you're good. Yeah. I think in Long Beach, especially there's usually people like falling over your guitar <laughs> and stepping on your wires and stuff like that. I know. They always ask me if I want like uh the dividers. I'm like, no, no, no. I like them there, but just watch. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. So, Ricky, obviously we're in, you know, still still stuck in a bit of a crazy time at the moment. We know you've been adapting again for anyone who wants to check it out. When's the next time you're uh, you're going live or how are you doing your live shows on Facebook? Every Sunday, Every Sunday I go Facebook Live 6 p.m. Every Sunday. Be sure to check that out. So, Ricky, we've been having a, a bit of fun with some of our guests. If you were to uh, picture, you know, the ultimate kind of, We'll call it a, a comeback party, a comeback concert. Um, who would be headlining Ricky Roach Fest and who would be opening? And would you be playing your own fest or would you be giving yourself the night off? <laughs> There's no budget. They could be alive or dead. You have a headliner and an opening act. No budget? Alive or dead? Oh, yeah. well, I'd have to go with, uh, I would say, the Beatles headline. That's a good one. We alive or dead. And, uh, and then the original lineup of Zeppelin opening up. Nice. nice. I could get sure. behind that. Yeah. And um, so you're at your concert with the Beatles and Zeppelin. We like this question, too. You're at a VIP table of four. Who are your three VIP guests? Another dead or alive. My yeah. my three VIP. Yeah. I'd have to bring my with? buddy John Lemondola. He actually just had hip surgery yesterday, so uh, I'll throw him a little ball. Oh, he goes to the concerts with me. We go see Yes and Opeth and everybody. We He's the, he's my buddy with concerts. He's your guy. But, uh, um. Uh, I would hang with Dave Grohl, Dave Grohl. from the Foo Fighters, mm -hmm. and who else? Um, hmm. I'd bring my buddy uh, Mike Flint, who's uh, my 
my old guitar player in my my band. I bring him too. Nice, nice. That's one hell of a concert too. Is up on the Beatles? Yeah. Uh, you could you could play like one song for them. You you could play in between. You'd have to get up. Uh, there maybe I'd do a little guest vocal. I yeah. come up for just. <laughs> I'll bribe you into it. I'll be the bartender. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so Ricky, yeah. we're at like thirty minutes. I mean, thank you so much for uh, talking to us. We'll let you go. I know people are busy these days, and I thought it was great. And uh, well, thanks for having me. I know we can't wait. I think like a bar with you in it will be literally one of my first stops. That's the second right, the governor says go. I'll oh my there. gosh! I was thinking it the other day. I'm like, I- I'm gonna have to really get my head around it. it- it's gonna be so emotional, elective. It's-, it's gonna be fun. And <laughs> for all while. for all of you out there, we'll we'll see Ricky soon, and he's gonna play us a song or two, a song uh, for this little outro. But thank you so much again, Rick. Thank you, Ricky. Thanks yeah. for having yeah. me, guys. Yeah. We'll talk yeah. soon. Yeah. Mom pajama rolled out of bed. She ran to the police station. When a bomber found out, he began to shout. He started the investigation. Well, it's against the law. It was against the law. Oh, what the mama saw, it was against the law. There we go. There you go. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Rick. Talk to you soon. Be safe.